It's not often we get to analyze a Tour de France stage winner's power file, uh, but luckily for us, Leonard Kempner won yesterday. A bit of a slow upload, otherwise I would have done this obviously last night, but alas, he uh, he uploaded this morning, um, and it's very exciting to to go through this power data. Obviously, Cordell Loz was today. Um, we'll try and look at that, but no one has power, so it's a bit like, pff, what's the point? Um, doesn't really interest me that much. I think Carapaz sometimes uploads, so maybe we'll have a look at that. Uh, but anyway, if you didn't know, Lemon Kemmler won, the, won this, this stage. I think it was like stage 15 or something. Um, so yeah, 168k, so, you know, decently long, long time in the saddle. Four and a half hours, nothing too crazy for these boys. 3,600 meters of climbing, so a climby day. Uh, we can look at his weight here, 66 kilos. Could be slightly less, I'm not 100% sure. FTP, I, I, I believe that's probably a little low. Uh, 38 kilometers an hour. Average speeds are pretty, pretty rapid. Uh, t normalized power 311, so so pretty solid, so like 4.5, 4.6. Um, I will caveat that before we sort of get onto the main power, which is, I think his power meter reads a little bit under, which isn't surprising. He uses a 4i on a Shimano crank, so, you know, we know Shimano cranks don't really read power too well. So that is something to be taken into account, because looking at some other power data from Reichenbach, who actually, to be fair, is using a Shimano crank as well. His seems to be a little bit higher, but more in line with what um, the watts per kilo charts uh, and sort of calculations people seem to do. So Kemner, like obviously the first part is just the neutralized zone, so you know, nothing crazy. Um, Kemner got in the break about 20k to go, so with the neutralized that will be around here. Um, got in the break, so it's like 309 normal, so pr pretty similar for the whole stage to be honest. Um, I think the first part of the break was actually quite hard, like 283 normalized on the flat is, is, is pretty decent, average speed of 50k an hour. He got a lot of help from his teammate, Daniel Oss, who was in the front, um, who really, really, you know, helped him to drive it. Um, and then he did it this 300 watts up the climb, so nothing crazy. First climb down was a cell along the Col de Port, um, which, as you can see, is not, you know, it's not it's not hard climb. It's 5%, but it's obviously got some steeper ramps. Uh, Normalised was 311, so like 4.7 watts per kilo. I saw on Reichenbach, so it was more like 5 watts per kilo, so, you know, around that 4.85 watts per kilo. Anyway. It doesn't really matter the exact thing. Um, it was sort of like low tempo for them. Nothing, nothing crazy at all. Um, the last part was steeper, obviously seven percent, twenty-one k an hour for these guys. That's that's really not very much um, at all. Uh, so obviously descent off the Col de Port. Um, we had the next climb, uh, which is the Mont de Revel, uh, and again, you know, similar tempo, three hundred fifteen watts. There's quite a big group coming to the bottom of the main climb. Uh, the bottom of the main climb is the Mont de Saint Nizier du Moucherot. Uh, and this climb says it's 7%, it's actually 6% because they're not doing 24k an hour for 7% climb, that's like Pogaccio style numbers. Um, but you can see it's really punchy, um, normalized power is significantly higher, up to 380 watts. Um, and that is literally just because um, of these huge surges that everyone was doing, Alaphilippe was attacking, Carapaz was attacking, they were looking really, really strong. Um, the teammate of, uh, so Pierre Rollon and his teammate Quinton Pache went up the road early. Um, and everyone was chasing. Some were doing a lot of work, and uh, Ineos also were with uh, Amador um, and Sivakov before Carapaz was really launching it. Um, so you can see, like the first part of the climb is still ridden pretty aggressively, but it's only till the last part when there were only a couple riders left, which was Reichenbach. Um, well, he, it was uh, eventually got to Reichenbach, Alphalie, Carapaz, and Leonard Kemner. And towards the end, you can see it was like 410 watts for the last bit, and Carapaz was launching, Kemner was launching as well, trying to get KOM points. Um, but what we'll see is really important is this one last surge that um, Kamna does towards the end. He just, if you watch it, he, he did a couple, um, but the main one that managed to get rid of uh, Carapaz was this one here, where he hit only 889 watts, but it was enough uh, to get a small gap, and then he just TT'd home. And to be honest, that it was really like a pretty solid... Uh, effort because this is, hadn't been easy here like you, you can see there's a lot of strong speed uh, power like peaks and he'd been riding at six watts per kilo but the ability to do like the 400 watt surges towards the end like you can see here 433 watts for two minutes but with big surges that's what dropped Carapaz and to be honest Carapaz looked the stronger climber but Lenny played it well left it towards the end and then really launched it over the top on that last on that final last acceleration here as soon as he was away he said that he knew he's going to be the stronger TT lad so this is the whole finale. He did 346 for 25 minutes, which is like 5.2 watts per kilo. So all in all, that last like hour of the of the day um, was ridden at 360 normalized for an hour, which is which is pretty crazy, and probably even higher. Yeah, like 365. So you know, 5.4 watts per kilo. I think it's probably more like 5.6 watts per kilo for the last hour, and that's super super impressive considering what he had done before. 
Um, but we'll get back to the last bit. So before the final climb, um, it was just 334 watts. Obviously, they're at altitude, they're at like 1,200, so nothing crazy. And I don't think that would affect them too much. Um, but it is saying here that it would be 346 according to their calculations. But I found their Strava sources calculations can be a little bit generous. Um, and then the route to 2000, uh, the last um, the last climb, he uh, he rode at 386 watts, um, so about six watts per kilo, 22k an hour. But this is what I mean. I think eight percent um, is slightly like, normally gives you would give you more than watts than that uh, for 22k an hour. Like if we look at Reichen back and Reichen back, I'm not exactly how short, how that's pronounced. He did 395 watts, um, which then gave a watts per kilo calculation of six watts per kilo, which I think could be more accurate. I think Reichen back is also a similar weight um, based on like how he looks as a person and is it says he's like two kilos less but you know they could be similar um but yeah he was doing like 400 watts up here normalized for 26 minutes like 6.2 so maybe it wasn't quite 6.2 maybe it was six but it was probably somewhere in between because obviously um Kamna didn't get anywhere near that he got like 5.6 so it's probably like 5.86 watts per kilo but yeah that's what you need so it's like getting in the break is is hard like just tactically then, you know, ride 290 normalized for three and a half hours, be able to ride five watts per kilo tempo. We always say, you know, the climbs before, they always ride five watts per kilo tempo, no issue. And it's the last climb, that's when you've got to be able to do the six watts per kilo. And then this one was even more impressive because he basically did like close to six watts per kilo for about an hour, maybe, you know, 5.6, maybe not six, but well over like at least five and a half, I think, because apparently is a bit dodged. Plus the normalized is like even higher uh, for the last 50 minutes of a race, which is, which is super, super hard. Um, and that's, you know, that is how you win a Tour de France stage. And big Leonard Kemner has some some serious numbers. Obviously, Lantern's a big fan of him. But, yeah, like, jokes all aside and everything about his little montage videos, he's he's seriously strong. Um, and that was an unbelievable uh, win. Um, and very, very good tactically, considering that Carapaz looked the stronger guy on the climb. He even said he did, but he played it well, and he just launched one attack. And then as soon as he was away, the, the time gap just kept going out and out and out and out. And um, was was you know, obviously large, uh, it was like a minute gap or something, I think, by the end of the day between him and Carabas. So pretty impressive from the young lad. Uh, and we hope to see more of it. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. We've got some good uh, videos coming up recently. Um, bit bike maintenance, which I'm sure you'll love. Um, and uh, yeah, probably a bit of hill climb stuff because they're going all right. Um, and see see how they're going to go for the weekend. So anyway, cheers for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.